Hello everyone, it's Sasha here again. We've been presenting this contact series for you to assist you with your contact endeavors, but also to help you understand the deeper journey of contact beyond the fun part of just looking at the sky and uh, getting a flash or getting a, a, a sighting, because there's so much more of importance regarding contact that is connected to your evolution as a species as well. The last three of the series we were talking about the quantum contact map. For this particular um, video today we want to talk about what we call the contact mirror. What does that mean? Those of you who have been listening to us or reading some of the information in the books have heard us say that contact is a big mirror, but perhaps it's not fully understood what that means. And we want to explore that idea today to give you an, uh, an understanding, a more expanded understanding of this realm of contact and its implications for the transformation of consciousness. So you've heard the concept that reality is a mirror of you or what you put out you get back or what you see out there is a reflection of yourself. This would then also include the contact experience. So first though, we want to talk a little bit of metaphysics with you about the idea, again using metaphors, of what you know in your reality to be uh, the funhouse mirrors. When you go into those hall of mirrors, house of mirrors in your carnivals, and you see all these different distortions of yourself. We're going to use that metaphor to go further with this idea of the contact mirror. So as the one consciousness depicted here on the quantum contact map as the I began its process of separation into the physical reality for the purpose of experience, learning and growth, it shut down various aspects of itself. It also experienced pain from the separation and each fragment, let's say, translated that experience in a different way. And therefore, when they come into a physical reality, the way they see reality is distorted. Now, for one who is perhaps not interested in spiritual things at all, they might go on with their lives for hundreds and hundreds of lives and not really explore these ideas. But once a human begins the spiritual awakening process, they begin to explore this idea of their relationship to reality and the idea that perhaps what they are seeing around them might not be the clear truth, much like fish in a water is distorted if you tried to uh, shoot an arrow at it, so to speak. Contact is very much the same way, where when you begin the contact process, it's very much a process of trying to contact other and maybe even for some people there's a f there's still a polarized thought of well I only want to contact the good guys I don't want to contact the bad guys how can I protect myself from the bad guys that type of polarized thinking will really keep one stuck on the quantum contact map so to speak uh, around the pain fear band and very very unlikely moving into the higher levels of contact because polarity in that sense is an illusion and is very dense therefore it kind of hangs out in those uh, lower areas on the map until one takes a very deep 
look within. And when one begins the process of looking at their shadows, embracing their shadows, really understanding the projections they are putting out in the world and the reflections they are getting back, that is when consciousness begins to change and therefore that is when contact begins to change. So we would say then that if there is still a, a concern about only attracting the good guys, then that is a clue of specific areas within you that still need to be embraced and healed. And that's okay because every person walks this map through their eventual awakening process. However, we want you to always remember the idea or the concept of the contact mirror. Every time you do contact work, there will be a lesson presented to you. The, the positive, wonderful experiences and maybe the uncomfortable experiences are always showing you an aspect of yourself that needs to be embraced or showing you an aspect of yourself that can expand you further in the evolution of consciousness. So, the question then is then, are there negative ETs? This has been a hot topic and it's one we've not really wanted to touch very often because we find that what we say is often misunderstood. And probably what we're going to say now about it is going to perhaps cause some frustration because humans like to have concrete answers. But when you are asking this type of question, there's not really a concrete answer. So let us say this. From our Pleiadian perspective, as we look into the energy of the universe, everything exists as potential. So any concept you can think of exists as a potential, quote unquote, out there. Much like many of you make the joke about uh, the experiment called Schrodinger's cat, yes? It is an, ex an example of potential. Everything exists as potential. So theoretically, the idea of negatively oriented ETs certainly exist, but is that a reality in terms of the contact matrix, so to speak, that your planet is experiencing now? We would say no. And we know that is going to uh, rattle some cages a little bit because people who have had negative ET experiences feel they are very real. Now certainly we are not talking about what you call black operations, black projects that are more human initiated, trying to masquerade as ETs. That is something we are definitely not going to discuss right now. It's not our realm, so to speak. We are only speaking of the idea of ET experiences. Are they negative? Are there negative ETs? In our experience out there in the community that is very actively working with you now, the answer is no. So then, if you have had an experience that is not human-based and it's been negative um, in content or in quality, what is that about? Again, as we have said, everything exists as potential. So there are a myriad of explanations for your experience, one of which could be the remembrance of a past life, a past experience, the remembrance of off-world experiences, the remembrance of perhaps some ancient ET history that is somehow coming up now. Or it could be the contact mirror 
trying to show you a specific lesson that has to do with the integration of fear and the integration of polarity. Is it necessary for you to know what the origin of that experience is? Is it the contact mirror trying to show you something? Is it an old memory? It is not necessary. Humans have mistakenly understood that intellectual knowledge will bring them awakening. But that is very, very far from the truth. Instead, we would say to not worry so much about understanding it intellectually, but to instead work with it emotionally. If the experience has brought up feelings of victimhood, as an example, then that is the clue that the contact mirror is showing you that is pointing to something within you having to do with victimhood that needs to be worked on. This is the wonderful gift of contact. So in the past lectures, when we've talked more about the quantum map, we've talked about this pain-fear band. And it's necessity because it, it helps you confront and purge and own and embrace, eventually, the shadow parts or the dark parts that have not wished to be seen up until this time. And that that stuff has to be confronted and embraced before moving deeper into the more rarefied energies of contact on the quantum map. So therefore, if you're having negative experience about victimhood or anything like that, what you're doing is bumping up against the pain-fear band, which is, as we've said before, lined with mirrors. It is inviting you to look at yourself. And in looking at yourself, you can set yourself free. When we say looking at yourself, we're not talking about in any way, shape, or form judgment or shame or blame, nothing. We are talking about simply seeing the experience in a neutral way, understanding it, owning it, forgiving yourself, embracing yourself, moving forward. It's a process, maybe takes time, for some people more than others, but it's a process that cannot be sidestepped at all. So the question then, might be t putting the contact mirror idea aside. Philosophically, do negative ETs exist? And that kind of question, first of all, is not really relevant to the contact work many of you are doing. But more importantly, and here's where this might frustrate you a little bit, the idea of you, you've heard the, the, the Zen koan. If a tree falls in the forest but no one is there to witness it, does it really make a sound? Or does the tree really fall? If you're asking about whether ET, negative ETs exist in potential, why not? Because anything you can conceive of exists. The real meaning of the question has more to do with, can it affect you? And as we've talked about, there, are, there, there is one way, really, to work with that energy if you feel it is affecting you and it is working with the self. A long time ago, there was a book that uh, Lisa channeled, it's actually not on the table here, but it's called Visitors from Within, which talks about the, the old Zeta abduction experiences from the past. And in that book, there's a lot of talk about the idea of self-empowerment as a way to kind of shift the contact experience. That was uh, an early way of discussing what we are talking about now. Everything is a mirror. We do not know how to say that any more plainly than that. And you can shift it only by walking through it on the map, 
so to speak. All right? So do not let that idea frighten you because many have walked through that path in the past. And we would actually say, <clears throat> so many of you now who have done the contact work and who have been having the experiences on the higher levels on the map, you have already done this confrontation with your shadows, maybe not even recognized it because the issue has arose in the context of your life, maybe through a heartbreak or through the death of a loved one or something like that where you've been forced to confront that shadow energy, not even realizing that that process you have done has actually given you the ability to operate more on these refined levels as well. So contact is a lens. And the lens is shaped, so to speak, according to your experiences, your beliefs, and your projections. You will experience contact as it moves through your own individual lens. When you clean the lens, the contact becomes clearer and clearer and clearer. For those of you that might have any final concerns about contacting something you don't want to contact, the universe does not work that way. You will attract to you what you need to see. So if there is fear, you might attract something like that to you as an experience for you to see your own lens. Allow this process to unfold in a way where you become the, the courageous pioneer because the only, only thing you will see is a reflection of yourself. And if you have watched the other videos, especially the one before this, you will know that as you move higher and higher and higher on the map, the you that you begin to confront is the you that is the one. All this other stuff you might have to confront on the lower levels are just obstacles, part of the obstacle course, let's say, to, of mastery. So contact, awakening, self-mastery, they are all intricately tied together. And please know, many of us have been holding your hands through this process for so very long. And we are still there, a breath away, guiding you and supporting you. Keep going. It's already shifting. We are so excited to see what you have been doing. And we look forward to what lies ahead together. Much love.